1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 13. I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. Now, let me say this to you. Um, everything I've shared in the last four messages, this is the fourth one, in the last three messages, this is the message that gave birth to all of those messages. So you would see me breeze through those first three messages and then settle on what I want to talk about because everything would make all the sense to you this morning. First Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 13, New Living Translation of the Bible. It says, three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. It's so short. Let's read it again. Three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. So when part four of real faith, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we receive insight this morning. We ask that, Father, you would speak to each individual in our own languages, where we are right now. Speak and shift us, Lord, to our next levels in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, because our lives will never remain the same after this. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. All right, media, you can put the formula on the screen for them now. It says, real faith equals revelation plus expectation, plus action, multiplied by love. And this morning, I'm going to break everything down together this morning. You will see everything work together this morning. Real faith is a revelation, expectation, action, multiplied by love. I told you before that real faith begins with revelation, and that revelation is triggered by meditation. Please, if you forget everything I say, remember this one thing. The most important thing you can do as a believer to position yourself for miracles and the fullness of what the kingdom of God has to offer is meditation in scripture. It is the one thing we are commanded to do. This book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth. Therein shall you meditate day and night. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit with his comfort, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And therein does he meditate Day and night. So, real faith begins with revelation. What is revelation? Revelation is the unfolding of scripture by the Holy Spirit so that we can gain understanding. Let me say it in another way. The word of God is a code. The word of God is a code. It means two things. What God is trying to say is not in the black and white. So, he said to us in Proverbs, My son, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. What you are looking for are the sayings. But you can only get the sayings when you meditate on my word. But if you run with my word, the letter kill it. Do you understand what I'm saying? It is true meditation that we position ourselves so that the Holy Spirit can uncover scripture to us. Because you can become a professor of theology and not know God. You are a man of letters. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So we have to meditate upon the word of God. Now, once you start meditating on the word of God, meditation brings you to revelation. It is revelation that births expectation. I've taught these things extensively, so I will not, because we've got some fantastic things to talk about today. Now, it is that revelation now that leads you to expectation. Okay? It is that expectation that leads you to action. For the purpose of this series, I'm not going to dwell a lot on action. Because we don't have issues with action. Or maybe on Wednesday, I'll go into a little bit of that. But for today, I don't want to deal with action. But you need to understand, the reason why we do what we do is because of our expectation. Now, it is possible for me to take a step of faith without having revelation and expectation. It's possible. And I've told you before now that when you do that, you don't get results. When you do what a man of faith does without having his revelation and expectation, you will not get the result of the man of faith. So the Bible says that by faith, the children of Israel walked through the Red Sea as on dry ground, and then the Egyptians wanted to do the same, and they drowned. Do you understand? That you want to do what another person is doing by faith because you go to the same church does not mean that you are in faith. Sleeping in a garage does not make you a car. Going to church does not make you a person of faith. It is revelation that leads to expectation. It is that expectation that makes you take steps. Let's look at another example. Abraham, the father of faith, took his one and only son, and he went to one of the mountains in Moriah, and he was going to kill him. God had to tell him to stop. You know the reason why? He had revelation 
and expectation. Jesus in the New Testament said, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it. That's revelation. Do you understand? So Abraham was on that mountain. He was not being religious. He was, he was transactional. He knew exactly what he was doing. So he had a revelation. He had a glimpse into what the future holds. And then he had an expectation. The Bible said he reckoned within himself that if God could bring out a child from a dead womb, then God can raise the dead without a point of reference. So Abraham did not do what he did because he saw somebody else do it. He did what he did by revelation. And you need to understand that faith is not contagious. Would you say to your neighbor for me, you need your own revelation. Do you understand what I'm saying? The faith of your father will not carry you. So God is the God of, I, um, God of Abraham, God of Isaac. But for him to become the God of Jacob, Jacob had to have his own encounter with God and his revelation. The same place he slept, the same place he used the pillow, I mean, stone for a pillow, then the stone went from stone to pillow and then from pillow to pillar because of revelation. The same thing he slept on, he woke up the following day, he anointed with oil. God is in this, it's revelation. And based on that revelation, he said, if you would go with me, if you would protect me, then he began to talk to God in a transactional way. That was when God became the God of Jacob. Because Jacob had his own experience and a revelation with God, and then he began to what? Follow God. Now, we said on Wednesday that expectation or hope is a vivid mental image inspired by revelation. We had a great time on Wednesday. I encourage you to get the CD. Okay? Expectation or hope is a vivid mental image inspired by revelation. It is the anchor for your soul talked about that on Wednesday. Let me move on because of time. I told you also on Wednesday that hope precedes faith and hope also sustains faith after you have taken your correspondent, I mean, cor correspondent, I mean, corresponding action while you wait for a manifestation. So let's do this thing. Hope, okay, inspires faith. Now, for the purpose of this illustration, when we say faith, now we are talking about action. Hello? Most of the time when we say faith, our mind goes to that thing we do because we believe. That's faith, Abby. That time you sow a seed, okay? You say, I did it in faith. Or that time you stand in your room and you make a declaration. You do it in faith. Or that time that you, you probably, okay, you're expecting the job and then you go get the suit, okay? And so you're, start, you're studying your GMAT. You're doing mock interviews because you believe. That is the step of faith. So let's do it. Press it once. Remove your hand. Good. It stops there. That's your act of faith. What happens after that? Press it again. Act of faith. Press it again. Act of faith. Now, this time around, press it and use your sustain. Hope. I didn't say take your leg off. Hope inspires the action. After you have done the action and you are waiting for your manifestation, hope sustains you it is an anchor for your soul till you see a manifestation because this is the mistake we've always made faith is not an action faith is a series of actions are you getting this anybody who's gotten any miracle from god any manifestation under god you would remember that it was not only one thing you did at different point in times by faith you did different things and in between those steps, it is hope that sustains you. What is that hope? It's a vivid mental picture. As you are meditating in scripture, thank you. And if I didn't tell him to stop, he wouldn't have stopped. And that's what hope does. It never disappoints. Do you understand? You see, many, many of us, we're trying to stand on the word. But when you have a true expectation inspired by the word of God, it is the word of God that will be carrying you. People will be begging you, why don't you quit? But there would be a vivid imagination, a vivid picture that you cannot deny. Do you understand what I'm saying? Faith is not a step. Faith is a series of steps. I like the fact that you call Abraham your father and that you call him the father of faith. So he took Abraham from promise to manifestation 25 years. And in that 25-year period, he had to take different steps of faith, what sustained him is expectation inspired by revelation. So God said to Abraham, at night, count the stars. 
in the morning, count the sands of the seashore. Why? I need a picture. And by the way, it was inspired by God. When God is talking to you directly, you don't need a preacher. When God is talking to you directly, that is the revelation of the word. Stop looking for the word when you already have the saying. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, did somebody get that? When you are meditating in scripture, you will receive similar instructions. Count the stars, count the sand. And even when God is not there, the sand and the star will keep your hope alive. Because God has given you something to hold on to. I gave this illustration and I'll do it again. The fetus is not a baby. So when the woman goes to the hospital, I think 12 weeks or 13 weeks or something, and they do a scan, and they say, that's your baby, and they print out the picture, God forbid you go home with what's in that picture. Do you understand? How do you know that this is pregnancy? I have something to show for it. So the woman takes the picture of the scan, puts it on the fridge. When she's making food, she feels something. She looks at the picture. You can't see what you carry. Somebody, you need to get that. Your next level, your miracle is spiritual. We are blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. On your way to receiving the manifestation here, you have hope. It's that mental picture. That's why meditation is more important than prayer. Because you see, at the point of asking for it, the Bible says whatsoever thing you desire when you pray, believe that you have received it and you shall receive it. Asking for it is not the, belief, it's not the big deal. Anybody can ask. Believing that you have received it, not that you shall receive it. At the point of asking for it, you should be certain you have it. What makes you pray for it is because you have it, so you ask for it. So every time God spoke to Abraham, God says, I have given you this land. I have given you. Are you getting this? I have given you. See, it is because I can see a picture of God has given me. That is what makes me go into this presence to say, Lord, give it to me. So you see, asking for it is formality. So what you are doing in meditation is I need to know what you have for me. Listen, in meditation, it is God convincing you. Prayer is not you convincing God to give to you. Prayer is you coming to say, okay, I'm ready for this thing you have always been talking about. And that's what meditation opens you to. It gives you hope. All I have done is to show you the value. Faith is very important, but I'm showing you the value of hope. So when I now come into God's presence and I ask for what he said he has given me, Till I see the manifestation, my expectation is not based on how I prayed, but based on what he showed me that made me pray. And Jesus told his disciples this parable, I think that's Luke chapter, is it chapter 18 or chapter 8? I keep mixing them up. One is what I'm talking about. The other one is he went from village to village. Is that chapter 8 or chapter 18? I think it's 18 verse 1. And Jesus told his disciples this parable to teach them that men ought always to pray and not faint. Men ought always to pray and not faint. And what was the story he told them? There was this widow who was in a city, and he went, she went to a judge. Please give me justice concerning this matter. The man was an unjust judge. He does not fear men. He does not care for people. He does not regard God. And the man will not give her justice. And the Bible said she kept coming. And then the unjust judge says, so that this woman will not weary me by her coming. Let me give her justice. Now, God, I mean, Jesus was not trying to reveal God to us. He was trying to reveal that even with men, you can wear them out because you believe. He said, but when it comes to God, God will not delay you. He said, I will give it to you speedily. There's only one challenge. By the time I'm ready for your manifestation, will you still be in faith? So what is faith in that story? Faith will make you come over and over again. Sorry. Hope will make you come over and over again. Your coming is faith. It is hope that makes you come. It is hope that sustains you, okay, to keep coming and coming and coming again because faith in its real sense is a series of actions. So let's go back to our text. Three things will last forever. Hope, faith, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Real faith is not steps of faith. Real faith is expectation that leads to, sorry, revelation that leads to expectation, that leads to a corresponding action. See, but every step of the way, you ought to be in love. That is why it is multiplied by love. Let's look at it in scripture. What pastor is saying essentially is this. Faith works 
only in an atmosphere of love. Please pay attention to me. There's a likelihood you've never heard it preached this way. Faith works only in an atmosphere of love. Matthew chapter 22 and verse 36. Matthew 22 and verse 36 to verse 40. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. What they were asking him is, how do we thrive in this kingdom? What does it take to thrive in God's kingdom? He didn't say faith. That you believe is not as important that you are in love. Three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. So Jesus said, love is the greatest commandment. God, others, yourself. I call it the triangle of success. God, others, yourself. In other words, everything you do by faith must be motivated by love. Love for God first. Love for others second. Love for yourself third. Matthew chapter 5. We're looking at the value of the power of love. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 23. Therefore, if you are offering a gift at the altar, that's an act of faith. We are quick to actions. I'm believing God for something. I want to sow a seed. Okay? I want to sow a seed. I want to give an offering. I'm, I'm releasing my faith. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your gift there in front of the altar. First, go and be reconciled to your brother, then come and offer your gift. If not, your act of faith will be sabotaged, not because you are not in love, but somebody is not in love with you. So one day I was meditating, I said, Jesus, what if I am the one that has something against somebody? He said, just burn it. You're done for. No help for you. Now, it's not this is not a rule. Please, you need to understand when we teach principles of scripture, it is not like God is giving us rules. God is trying to let you understand. It's like, I'm a lady. I don't kiss on the first date. Do you understand? See, we're not debating whether kissing on the first date is. See, but look, this is who I am. And see, God is too old to bend himself to you. So what we do in preaching and teaching is just to reveal you, look, this is how it works. In God's kingdom, if you walk it his way, it will work for you. You know, some of us, we pray powerful prayers, and in your consciousness, you know you are not at peace with somebody. And he says, no, leave this act of faith. This your revelation that has led to expectation must be multiplied by love before you take this action. If not, the equation will not work. Are you getting this? First Peter chapter 3. I came to church like a lawyer this morning. By the preponderance of evidence, I seek to convince you that love is the greatest. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 7. Husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and hears with you of the gracious gift of life so that nothing will hinder your prayers. Prayer is an act of faith. Hello? That I have a revelation is not a problem. I can see it in scripture. God has given me the city. Father, in the name of Jesus, I take delivery of the city. And God he says, before you pray to me, pray to your wife first. Three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Faith only works in an atmosphere of love. And it has to be love for God first. Love for men second before love for yourself. But he told you to love yourself. So let me show you how it works. I was coming to church this morning. One guy was driving behind us with a very wicked Mercedes Benz. And when I saw the car, I told Pastor D, I said, fantastic, lovely car. It's not registered. So Pastor D said, I'm sure it's for sale. I said, yes. So she was like, you want to buy it? I said, I don't mind. It's a beautiful car. It's a powerful car. But guess what? But I stopped thinking about it. 
Stop talking about it. You know the reason why? Because over the years, I have trained myself to know how things come. That things don't come in God's kingdom because you go for things. Things come because you are thinking of God and others. So God will send you things for the benefit of others. Pastor, give us Bible example. Solomon gave to God a thousand bond offerings. Then God said, ask me for anything. So what did he do first? Who did he love first? God, ask me for anything. I will give to you. Solomon said, ah, I'm a child. I don't even know how to place my left leg in front of my right leg. Give me wisdom because of your people. They are such a great people. Give me wisdom to lead them. God said, ah, but boy, mummy, man. Ah, wisdom, Abi. I will give you wisdom. But beyond wisdom, I will bless you. I will give you wealth. I will give you prosperity. I will give you health. Much more than what you asked for. So when you want money from God, ask for wisdom. In the big evil himself, you want it. <laughs> so don't deny what you want, but know how to get it. So, so how is Pastor Shegu going to get that bands? It's very simple. God, what would you have me do for the rest of 2018? For the sake of your people. <laughs> There's a sister listening to me, and you have been praying to God. Father, my husband, my husband, all my mates are married. Time is going, time is going. You want it, and you will get it. But this is how to get it. Father, where is that young man? With a divine assignment, you have configured me to help. The earlier we start, the faster your work will move. <laughs> Do you understand now? Yes. So God said, it's not good for man to be alone. Watch this. I will make a help suitable for him. I will make a help suitable for him. I will make a help suitable for him. Then God brought all the animals to see what Adam will call them. I said, God, we are confused. This is not supposed to be a wife search. What is gorilla doing here? <laughs> God says, the way I bless you is in response to the way you bless people. So when he favored all the animals and named them, and the Bible said for him there was no wife, God put him into a deep sleep. Now wait. God said, it is not good for man to be alone, I... So if it is God, who will make a help suitable for him? Are you saying God did not know that the rib was where the wife was? I'm trying to tell you, the donkeys you are looking for have been found. They were not lost in the first place. They were moved. But there is a greater assignment. Are you listening to this? You just have to learn to switch from the donkeys to the greater assignment. Switch from the donkeys to the greater assignment. Stop, stop bombarding heaven with a job. And this principle I'm sharing with you even works on men. Don't go for an interview and the place they hear your voice the most is, so how much are you willing to earn? No. Mr. Daniel told us about that guy that asked us, so, so what, what's the company about? What do I get to contribute? How are you going to leverage on my, on my skills? Okay? Exactly what you want me to, where is this company going to be in the next five years? What is the critical assignment I'm here to fulfill? I need to be clear up front. So, so how much are you willing to earn? We'll talk about that later. But before you left the house, you wrote it on a sheet of paper. You declared it in God's presence. Pastor, what are you saying? It takes love to make faith work. And it takes hope to keep faith alive. It takes love to make faith work. And it takes hope to keep faith alive. I was amazed at how every time in scripture, almost all the time in scripture, the moment you see faith, you will see love. And somewhere around the corner, you will see hope. Because three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 5 to 6. But by faith, we eagerly await through the Spirit the righteousness for which we hope for in Christ, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith 
expressing itself through love. Can you see the three of them? Faith expressing itself through love. We don't know your faith by any other thing, but by the way you express love. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 3 to 5. We always thank God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ when we pray for you. Because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love you have for all the saints. You can't be in faith and be out of love. He says the faith and love that spring from the hope that is stored up for you in heaven and that you have already heard about in the word of truth, the gospel. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 2 to 3. We always thank God for all of you, mentioning you in our, in our prayers. We continually remember before our God and Father your work, that's the act, produced by faith, your love, I mean your labor, prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 3. We ought always to thank God for you, brothers, and rightly so, because your faith is growing more and more, and the love every one of you has for each other is increasing. If your faith grows, how we know it is that what? Is that your love grows. If your faith is growing, your love is growing. So this is the summary of the real faith. Acts of faith motivated by love will produce supernatural results. Acts of faith motivated by love will produce supernatural results. This is the reason I titled it Real Faith. Because a lot of times we say faith and we just think it's a form of belief or it's some of those things we do in church. You know, because we believe. Real faith is revelation that leads to expectation, that leads to corresponding action, and all the while inspired and motivated by love. And a good example of that in the Bible is the story of Abraham. When Lot was taken away. Now think about it in the flesh. Abraham had no business fighting international wars because of a wayward cousin. Think about it. The Bible said it took 318 men. 318 men under no guise can defeat four kings. So when the, the king of Sodom was going to give him, he said, I have lifted my hand to God. Think about this. In other words, I came by faith. And I conquered by faith. But this is the question. What was in it for him? What was in it for him? Because he returned all the goods and gave the title to Melchizedek. And seemingly went back home empty-handed. Chapter 15, verse 1. And the Lord appeared to Abraham in a vision and said to him, I am your shield and your exceedingly great reward. You know what that means? I am your protection and ever-multiplying salary. In other words, in the physical, it looks like nothing is coming to you. See, but from this moment forward, because you have faith figured out, I would bless you. Think about it. Genesis 22, take your son, your one and only son, to one of the mountains in Moriah, sacrifice him. What was in it for him? God first. People second. I am guaranteed. Amen? God first. Others second. I am guaranteed. God first, other second, I am guaranteed. Ladies and gentlemen, that is real faith. Let us pray. Yeah.